Howdy, Tinker Nerds. You guys had such a good response to my last behind the scenes video that I decided to pull back the curtains again and give you guys a taste of what goes into making a tutorial here at Tinkernut. So let's just jump right into it and pick up right where we left off. Once I have a project idea, I try to create a test version of it. Number one, to see if it's feasible, and number two, to see if it works. I can't tell you just how many projects that I've started and ended up having to scratch simply because they weren't feasible enough to do. That's right, I'm not the superhero you thought I was. Except for maybe that one. With the research done and a working product, I then start on a script. Yes, that's right, I script out just about everything. It acts as like a storyboard for me. So now that I have a script and I now know what to say, it's time to start filming. I use a Canon 60D either with a short depth of field lens meant for portraits or this nice 55 millimeter lens. For audio, I use this mini Rode microphone that just sits atop the camera. Then it's on to the fun stuff, multimedia editing. For the first five or six years of my YouTube channel, I used a Windows computer as my predominant means of editing multimedia. But over the last couple of years, I started using a MacBook Pro solely for the purpose of editing multimedia. And I have to say, I like the MacBook Pro a lot better, and that specifically in terms of multimedia, I think it does a better job. But that's just my experience. Nowadays, I use Adobe Premiere for video editing, but back in the day, I used to use Windows Movie Maker or Debug Mode's Wax program for editing videos, and they work just fine. Just depends on your purpose. So in Premiere, I first put all the dialogue in order, and then I add any screenshots or extra footage so that I have a nice, cohesive, bare-bones video. After that, I export it to Adobe After Effects where I add visual effects and color grading. This is where things can get complicated. I can add layers and layers of animations, 3D models, effects, and text, and the hardest thing for me to do is to dial back all the cool stuff I wanna add to my videos. And you longtime viewers can attest to that fact. For last year and most of this year, I used an animation style that was so complex that it took upwards of 20 hours to render a three to five minute video. But as most of you know, I've recently changed to a new video style with a lot less animations, and that now takes three to four hours to render a three to five minute video. So now we have the video rendered with the animations, but we are not done yet. The last step before uploading the video to YouTube is to add audio effects. I get most of my audio sound effects from freesound.org and soundbible.com. And I can then tweak the volume and length of the audio clip in Audacity. Then I hop back into Adobe Premiere and add them to the video. The one thing that I've tried to learn over the years is to use audio effects to enhance a video and not overpower it. But the most difficult thing by far is finding the right sound effect for the action. I mean, what are falling cardboard cutouts and dissolving pictures really supposed to sound like? Hello. All right, everyone, I hope that was helpful. Next week is a US holiday, so there won't be a video because I'll be spending time with family, but I will resume videos the following week, so stay tuned for that. And what's it gonna be about? Okay, I'll tell you. I'm gonna start experimenting using Amazon's Alexa service for artificial intelligence. So I will see you guys next time.